Captain Tom, but a client that I have cooked for a couple times before. Brian. Nick. Hi, how are you? Nick <laughs> loves my food, but this time it's um, very special because he's married them to this Orthodox Jewish family. They keep kosher. You know, this is something that I've heard about, keeping kosher, but I don't know about what it really means. So he's got to have someone to kind of talk me through a kosher dinner. I walk into the kitchen, oh, yeah. and there's the rabbi. Rabbi David. David, yes. Okay, like David, but with an But David. This is, um, yeah. yeah, this is real. I wasn't expecting this. He's got the beard, he's got the black hat, and kind of stoic. So as you know, I've married into a Jewish family. I'm not Jewish myself, but this okay. is my way of connecting with them all, and I really need your help. You've got the rabbi. You've got the Australian Nick and Chef Brian, black dude. Talking about ingredients, I don't know anything about a kosher meal, but I am quick study. Well, we'll find out about that. Oh, okay. <laughs> I gotta tell you, I'm a little nervous. First rule of kosher, the rabbi must supervise. Will you be here every step of the way? Yes. So literally, as I'm chopping and roasting and... I'll be breathing down your neck. This dinner is either gonna be dessert or disaster. Because if I break a rule, one rule, with Rabbi David, Nick's dinner... There's different animals we're allowed to eat, different kind of um, you know, products we're allowed to use. And one of the kosher laws is you cannot mix meat and milk together. As serious as I thought it was, well, it got a little more serious once he told me the rules. This side of the sink is used for only meat dishes. Left side. The left side. These are all meat. You can use these. Now over here, so you cannot use them. These are off limits. They're dishes. We're not only going to go in this area. I'm like, should I have a pad and a pen? The bottom one is a dairy oven, so you cannot use this one. Okay, okay. Yeah, and just I'm... him taking me through that is exhausting. And I can just start in on yes. preheating? Well, actually, you cannot. I, Chef Brian, cannot light the stove. It must be lit by Rabbi David. I did bring my own knives. Now, uh oh, I see your face. I can't use my tools. I have to use the tools that have been blessed, that are kosher. Oh, here, these are the knives. So not only do I have to make certain that the dairy and meat don't collide, but I have to use some old wretched knives. Everything I've ever learned and I experienced in a kitchen, that's done. Um, so I'm in the kitchen with Rabbi Davi, trying to get the meal ready for Nick's family. Okay, let's get started. First, I have to inspect the products to make sure. Okay, that perfect. Let me start to pull out some of them. I bought all of my ingredients from the kosher market and came up with a menu that I think Nick's family is gonna love. They want a couple appetizers and a couple sides, and they must have lamb. Even though this is kosher, they still want some yumsters. I'm like, you know what? Let me still give a little Chef Brian in here. What are you gonna use the Jasmati rice for? Oh, I'm gonna do that's the baked uh, sweet and savory rice with the dates. Mm. We're gonna have to check those. In kosher cooking, the rabbi has to inspect everything, and they are really your supervisor. Just keep on going. We're looking for bugs. Okay. That's what we're looking for. Oh. oh, okay. Rabbi Davi sees one little imperfect rice, and he's like, well, what's this? I say, well, that's an irregular grain there. We'll have to throw it out. If more than one of them have it, then there may be a problem with the whole batch. If he thought that something was tainted, it's done. Here's my date. Okay, I, I can pull no, my... No, no. Oh, okay, no, I'm not gonna... But if you notice something, you'll let me know. Okay, got that. So I'm not to touch this, though, until right. you inspect right. it. Exactly. There may be a problem with the whole batch. And I'm like, I don't have a backup, though. I think that's just the skin. Yeah. Um, I think it's, like, kind of dry, so it, it kind of turns. It's fine. Do you know how labor-intensive that is? It looks good. Yeah. One by one, it took him like 25 minutes to inspect each and every date. What I'm trying to now wrap my brain around is countering like the fact that you have to inspect and also be on time. I hope you make it. Thanks. I'm used to doing this a lot faster, you know what? Oh, 
see how dull that is. Like, it's pressure enough getting the food out, but now you have to make certain that it stays kosher. We have two sets of everything in, in our kosher kitchen. And you keep meat and dairy separate. And I'm like, I gotta get this right, but I have to make certain that the food comes out in a timely manner because the guests are arriving soon. I've got the ginger, the sea salt, veggie stock. All right, we're cooking now. I'm back now. They insisted that I make lamb. They must have lamb, number one. Must. The best way to do this lamb is to pan sear it, you know? Get it all smoky. Mm, the, the flavors of fresh garlic, the kosher salt, the black cracked pepper. Woo! Wait a minute. Where am I? By the lamb. No, they're not, they're not in the freezer. Oh! So my assumption with the two refrigerators, the two sinks, the two ovens, is that there's a meat side of the refrigerator and a dairy side of the refrigerator. No, my friend. I put the lamb in the freezer. What's with the meat? When are we going to start preparing the meat? <laughs> I just close. looked, and the meat is in the freezer. You're kidding. I'm not even close to joking with you. So I'm going to have to char broil as opposed to the pan searing, which is what I wanted to do initially. I got to shift it to overdrive now and use that one oven to now roast the lamb. Well, actually, I have to pray the afternoon uh, prayer right now, which means I'm leaving the kitchen and you have to come with me. Like, you mean we have to stop? You can't be in here by yourself without me supervising. But I've got food. While he's doing his afternoon prayer right before dusk, I'm praying that my food doesn't burn. My client, Nick, needs to impress his new Orthodox Jewish family that keeps kosher. Nick has family coming in from all over the country. And I have frozen lamb. OK, you got to be very careful, because now we're dealing with meat, which it can be really problematic if it gets mixed with milk right now. The clock is ticking, the pressure, the, it's on my back. We're on high alert here, because the, now that the meat is out, we have to um, be extra careful. All right. Oh, great. Once I brought the lamb out of the freezer, the whole game changed. OK, so I'm going to now put it in the pot. Yes, but be very care careful with the um, dairy sink. Rabbi David was already breathing down my back, but now he was so determined not to have that meat come close to that dairy sink. You know, let's, let's even extend. Let's try to... OK. If I make a wrong move, and bump into that bowl and knock that meat over, it's done. It's a learning process. It is, it is an absolute learning process, my friend. After maneuvering around those meat and dairy sinks, I'm proud to say every last lamb shank will be joining us for dinner. And I think I'm about half hour out, right? 20. Oh my gosh. Oh no, I'm not a half hour out. Okay. I can hear the party out in the dining area, and it sounds like a full house. How's it going? OK, so um, let's see here. I'm plating the salad, and then the soup is probably another 15. 15? Yeah. I know it. OK. Uh, you can see the pressure on his face. The food has to come out, and I am so far behind. I don't think I've ever been this far behind, ever. The food has to come out, and I am so far behind. I'm going to need help. Nick says, I can help you. Next thing you know, Nick's helping. Rabbi David's helping. So finally, we're rocking and rolling, baby. What a, what a team we got here. Rabbi David, he's doing the sexy on the soup with the pepper. And it was kind of fun seeing Rabbi David do his thing, you know? Then you've got Nick serving my roasted red pepper and butternut squash soup. It's because of you guys that this is being made possible, so... Yeah. The credit really goes to Brian, you know, with put on the spot here, putting in, you know, something in production he's never done before. He did a fabulous job. And I think you've earned uh, this as a gift. Oh, yeah. <laughs> is, is this a keeper? This is a keeper, yes. I went in, I respected the culture and the rules of kosher cooking, and he's saying to me, thank you, my friend, for listening. I learned so much, and I actually can say that we pulled it off. <laughs> Is this it? It suits you.